lot of weapon systems claim to be multi-purpose, but usually they make some kind of compromise. With the air defense anti-tank system, this was not really the case. ADATs could effectively engage helicopters, jets, light armored vehicles, and tanks. Not only could it do all that, it had relatively few issues. So if it worked so well, why wasn't it adopted? Well, let's take a look. In the later stages of the Cold War, American air defense was not looking great. It had some pretty noticeable capability gaps, especially when it came to supporting heavy armor like the M1 Abrams. By using anti-tank guided missiles like the Ataka, Soviet helicopters could easily outrange armored units. Even worse, these helicopters could hog terrain, making them difficult if not impossible to see on radar. To try and solve this very obvious problem, the Army started the DIVAD program, or Division Air Defense. Ultimately, this led to the M247 Sergeant York. Based on the M48A5 chassis, it had two 40mm guns from Bofors. These could fire proximity-fused ammunition. In utilizing a modified version of the F-16's radar system, it could theoretically see helicopters in clutter. In practice, this wasn't really the case. The radar system was finicky to say the least, and there were some other performance issues, such as the cannons failing to feed ammunition. It was believed that these issues could be fixed, but it was cancelled in 1985. Not only was it the victim of a reformer hit piece, its issues were discovered too late in the program. There simply wasn't enough oversight, so issues were discovered too late. To try and fill the gap left by DIVAD, the Army started the Forward Area Air Defense Program. In particular, the Line of Sight Heavy Program would pick off where DIVAD left off. Four missile systems were selected to compete. The British Rapier, French Roland, French Shaheen, and American ADATs. ADAT stood for Air Defense Anti-Tank System, and as the name obviously implies, it could engage both aircraft and ground vehicles, like main battle tanks. Development of ADATs goes back to 1979. The parent company was actually Orlikin, a Swiss company. They selected a number of subcontractors to help them build it, but the primary one was Martin Marietta, an American company. Martin Marietta would make the missile, Leighton Canada would make the radar and electronics, and Orlikin would make the turret and laser. ADATs was designed as a laser beam riding cyclose missile, which would effectively make it immune to countermeasures. If you don't know what SACLOS means, it means semi-automatic command line of sight, so the missile goes wherever the sight is pointed. Out of the four missiles, the ADATS was the clear winner, for a few good reasons. First, ADATS didn't have a tracking radar, only a search radar. This meant that if a pilot was looking at his radar warning system, he wouldn't know when the ADATS was locking him. He would only see the search. And as you can imagine in combat zones, you're going to be getting a lot of search pings. Usually, pilots wouldn't pay this any mind, but when they got the track ping, that's when he knew he was in trouble. And because ADATS was a laser beam riding missile, and planes at that time didn't have a way to know if they were being painted with a laser, the pilot in theory would never know he was shot at, unless he physically saw the missile, which would be difficult. This was something the other missiles couldn't offer, and ADATS was by far the newest. Oh, and all the other missiles were foreign, so not only is the US losing out on jobs, it also take longer to procure. And to add insult to injury, the other missiles were pure anti-air. They didn't have multi-role capability. In lieu of a track radar, the ADATs had optical and thermal trackers, so it could work in both night and day. The radar could be used to determine range, but it also had a neodymium laser rangefinder. To tell the missile where to go, which is pretty important, the ADATs had a coated CO2 missile guidance laser. CO2 laser rangefinders are pretty good at operating through fog or smoke, at least when compared to traditional options. The tracking radar was a pulse Doppler model, meaning it had good clutter rejection. The turret was entirely unmanned, with the gunner and commander sitting in the hull. It had second gen thermal sights. To see through the sights, they had CRT displays. The radar could see targets up to 24 kilometers away, and at an altitude of 6 kilometers. As for the missile itself, its velocity was in excess of Mach 3, which was pretty standard. Its max range was about 10 kilometers, at an altitude of 6 kilometers. To know when to explode, it had both an impact and laser proximity fuse. The former would be used for ground targets, the latter would obviously be used for aircraft. It had a 125 kilogram dual-purpose warhead, with both a shaped charge and frag casing. The missile was quite devastating. Sabres weren't exactly known for being incredibly sturdy, but I mean look at that thing, only the tail is still there. As far as armor penetration goes, the figures vary a bit. Since warheads perform differently against different composites, militaries typically use RHA equivalency, or how much raw steel it can go through. For the ADATs, lower numbers put it at 90 centimeters. The highest number says 100. That might not seem like a lot for a missile, but look at these plates. It's quite a lot. Either way, it could destroy pretty much any Soviet tank made at that time, even with explosive reactive armor such as Contact 5. The ADATs probably wouldn't go around hunting tanks, it would probably only act in self-defense. This is something the Sergeant York couldn't really do. It did have semi-armor piercing rounds, but they were only useful against very light vehicles. Anyway, the turret had two quad stacks of missiles, so eight missiles in total. No reloads were carried. The launchers could depress 9 degrees and elevate to 85, but they could be guided up to 90 degrees, meaning that if a plane flew directly over, it could still be shot down. 
Before being selected by the US, ADATS was already in use by Canada. They mounted it on the M113, but the US went a different direction. Remember, this had to keep up with tanks. The M113 is pretty fast for what it is, but not as fast as other offerings. For the US, they chose the M3A1 chassis, the Bradley Cavalry Fighting Vehicle. The Bradley could keep up with M1s, and was a fair bit newer. In addition to the missiles, the US ADATS would also have an autocannon, a 25mm Bushmaster. This typically fired at 200 RPM, but on the ADATS this was raised to 500, a pretty substantial increase. In the mid to late 1980s, the ADATS underwent testing, and results were pretty mixed. The missile itself performed very well, it actually exceeded expectations, but the chassis was very troubled. At this point, things were pretty rough for the Bradley already. You slap an absolutely giant turret onto it, it's probably not going to help. In one instance, the laser rangefinder did malfunction, and meant that the missile missed the target on the first shot, but the gunner corrected and destroyed it. It was also argued that due to safety, the laser rangefinder couldn't be used like it would in actual combat, meaning it was less accurate. While doing research for this video, I saw some pretty dubious claims that the ADATs didn't work in adverse weather, but from what I can tell, this is just blatantly not true. In 1986, the ADATs was tested in Saudi Arabia. During a pretty rough sandstorm, the ADATs managed to engage both tanks and drones. It could be hampered by bad weather, but only if it was bad enough to ground planes anyway. In fact, it surpassed the requirements for adverse weather, whether operating with clouds, fog, smoke, or dust. The clutter rejection also worked well. It destroyed a hovering helicopter that was obscured by smoke, was in ground clutter, and the ADATS was being actively jammed. There were a few issues to address, but the army was optimistic. It was proposed that ADATS be nicknamed Linebacker. If you're not American and don't know what that means, in football, a linebacker is a versatile defensive role, so that fit the ADATS pretty well. However, things would quickly turn sour. As it typically happens with these 80s and 90s projects, the fall of the Soviet Union spelled doom for it. Instead of Soviet helicopters sitting in bunkers waiting for the Cold War to go hot, they were now being scrapped or sold off. Year after year, the ADATS budget shrank. Until in 1992, the ADATS was eventually cancelled. It was believed that Stingers could fill the gap. It started with the Bradley Stinger fighting vehicle, which was essentially just a normal Bradley, but there were two guys with Stingers in the back. Later, it'd be replaced by the M6, a Bradley with a quad stinger launcher. Not only did it take the ADAT's role, it also took its nickname, Linebacker. It did serve with the Canadian military, but it was canned about a decade ago. All the reliability issues have been solved, but they are simply no avoiding cancellation. To this day, the army still relies on stingers, most recently on the M. Shorad, a striker-based vehicle. So overall, the ADAT's was a pretty good vehicle. It did make some pretty bold claims, but it actually backed them up. The ADATS met or exceeded its requirements, but it was simply too expensive. It had some trouble initially, but as pointed out by the Army, so did the Bradley and M1 Abrams. No vehicle is perfect right off the bat, especially if the tech is very new. Anyway, that's pretty much all there is to say. If you guys have suggestions for video topics, leave them in the comments. I hope that video was somewhat informative, and I'll see you on the next one.